Let's see. All right. Um, what do you think, Justin? Should we go ahead and get started? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We'll, we'll do some introductions real quick. And as always, um, if you have any questions, you should be able to submit those. Um, we'll, we'll probably kind of get through the content. And, uh, you know, if, I mean, if, if someone has something uh, really, they'd really like to jump in, we do have a raise hand feature and things like that, but we will, we'll, we'll make sure to do a, a Q and A at the end of this. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to have, have everyone on uh, go for it. Brendan. Yeah. So um, yeah, th again, thanks for, thanks for joining on um, today. We're excited about our topic where we're talking specifically about home services companies. I think a lot of the, the concepts here apply to companies outside of that. Um, but I mean, between Actify and Best Company, we work with a ton of home service companies. And so we really want to share like what we're seeing in the industry, what's working for people, what's working for our customers. And hopefully you can take a few things out of this and apply it to your process and, and to some of the tools that you're using. Um, we started working with Best Company here pretty, pretty like a little bit ago, and they're awesome. They're, they're one of our neighbors here in Utah. Um, we're Utah based. And uh, they are changing the game with, with customer reviews and um, not only helping with customer attention, but also helping you use reviews to, um, to really get more people into the funnel again. And so on both sides of it, the existing customers and potential customers um, really changing the game. So yeah, Justin, Ash Justin Ashby is, is here with us. He's the head of product marketing for Best Company. Um, and yeah, he's awesome. Got a lot to learn from him. Yeah. And we're excited to be with Actify. This is Brendan. He's director of marketing over at Actify. Um, what's been interesting is, you know, best companies really trying to scale up our partnership network. We're trying to identify the marketing tools and, and services out there that really align specifically with uh, the verticals that we operate in. So I'm seeing a lot of solar companies that are joining us. I'm seeing a number of, um, it, mainly home services. And so, we tapped into Actify um, thinking about our own kind of uh, marketing efforts and, and how we can increase conversions in you know, sales pipeline. And Actify is kind of leading this new space of conversational AI where you don't have to have a person responding or interacting with potentially a, a, a lead. And that could be a sales lead. In our case, we're doing some obviously some, you know, some customer opportunities and we're, we're using Actify to make sure that we get as many people through uh, the pipeline as a qualified, um, you know, customer in some cases. And then also gathering reviews. We've seen uh, some really neat opportunities on the texting service where we can, you know, we uh, can engage in these AI conversations to help people kind of come to a, uh, be able to leave a review. So because we were using Actify in our own company, we started to think, wow, uh, this could really be, be influential um, for a number of the companies that are working with us to integrate it into their own uh, sales pipelines and other parts of their business. So rather than, uh, you know, just kind of highlighting a company that we think is doing some really cool things, we actually get to say that we use Actify and we felt like it was just a no brainer to, to, to kind of get share audiences and, and, and get each other, um, you know, in front, in, in, in front and center. So Brandon's going to take the first half of this presentation. He's going to be talking about, um, you know, the opportunities in home services, how you can really uh, level up um, the marketing efforts to really push people through the sales pipeline. And then I'll take over really getting the most ROI from those customers that you can generate and also how some reputation marketing um, can really aid in those conversion rates as well in the pipeline. So Brandon, take it away. Awesome. Appreciate it. Let's jump in. Uh, so... I'm not going to, honestly, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this slide. Um, you guys know your markets. Uh, I know we have pest control companies here on the call. We have solar companies. We have various companies and, and mar all the markets are slightly different. The point of this slide that I want to make is that your market's huge. Um, that you're not, you're obviously not selling, I don't know, accessories for hamster cages. Like there's not that you guys have a massive market. It's, there are over a hundred million homes in the U S um, and obviously the, I don't want to over, oversimplify. you guys know the ins and outs of your market, but there's a huge opportunity out there. And, and so really the question is how do you take advantage of that? How do you capture that demand that's out in the market? And so that's what we're going to be jumping into today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, and this is like the one thing that I would really want to 
hit home. Um, speed to lead. And so this is what we are seeing with, with our customers and we're trying to implement with all of our customers and help them create a strategy around this. This, I mean, we, this term isn't new. This, this phrase isn't new. This has been around for a long time. We all understand what it means. And I think we've, we've improved over the years on it. Um, but a little, a little school out, out East named Harvard University, maybe you've heard of them. They did a study, their research team did a study um, specifically on response time from a sales team. And a few things that they found um, are that after five minutes pass, when a lead comes inbound, after five minutes, after they filled out that form or whatever they did to come inbound, the odds of connecting with that lead drop significantly. And they say by 80%, which is huge. Um, if we think about our processes and including ours at Actify, I mean, pretty much most of us, if you're doing under five minutes, hats off to you, but I think the majority of us are not. Um, typically how it works is a lead will come through. We have to somehow qualify that lead get it to the right people. Some of the team is at lunch. Some of the people are on vacation. And there's just so many obstacles to, to really getting to that lead as quickly as possible, especially within five minutes, um, which kind of leads to the next point. 55% uh, of companies take longer than five days to respond to a lead. And 12% of, 12 of companies never reach out, which is terrible. There's literally somebody raising their hand saying, I potentially want to buy your product and these companies never reach out. Now, I'm, I, I would say, considering we're all here on the call, that's not us. Um, we're not taking that long and we're not never reaching out. But the whole point of this, we need to get as, as quick as possible to when that person fills out the form or, or comes inbound in some way. And the last point that they make, um, I think this is pretty obvious, speed is a competitive advantage, but when you think about it, I mean, if, if you think about yourself when you're shopping for an insurance, for an, an insurance plan, um, you fill out the form on three different companies' websites. And if one of those got back to you within five minutes and the other two took over five days, honestly, you probably will have already signed up with one company before the other ones have responded. Um, and so that is a clear competitive advantage. And the same goes for all of us, no matter what industry we're in. Um, People want instant gratification. They want to speak to somebody quickly. Um, and so this is, this is easy to say and a little harder to implement. And so a few things to consider here. Um, do you even have the capacity to respond to somebody in five minutes on, on the human side? Um, do you have a full team set in place to to be able to take on a lead and respond within five minutes? Um, I think the answer for a lot of us is probably no. If you do, that's incredible. Um, and I think you're one step ahead of a lot of us. On the process and technology side, even if you have the right people in place, do you have the right process and technology to, get, to respond to people within five minutes? Um, this could be lead routing. This could be your CRM. And do you even, and that also leads to, do you have the right data? Um, if your reps are territory based or if they are, uh, however they're segmented, do you have the right data in place? And can you get that data within five minutes to get it to the right person to reach out? And then the last thing to consider is what channels do your customers respond to within those five minutes? Um, for example, if, if somebody is, wants one of those lifts on their stairs, like the wheelchair kind of lifts on their stairs. The audience for that is probably gonna respond in a different channel um, or prefer to respond in a different channel than somebody looking at installing solar panels. Um, that's, that would be my guess, but I'm, that's my, my, my bigger point is just that people like to respond in different ways um, with different channels. And so, do you know the channel that your customers prefer to respond in? Um, so I want to jump into that a little bit, um, talking about the right channels. And so phone calls are nothing new to us. Um, 
obviously phone calls are are the preferred method for reaching out to a company um, for a consumer but if you guys are like me i was i was literally talking to somebody one of my coworkers yesterday that i think i get probably 10 spam calls per day that i don't recognize um and for some reason that's really gone up in the last year or so um and so really i don't answer uh if it's important i feel like it's they can leave a voicemail and i think we're probably we're all pretty aligned on that um and so according to um this stat americans pick up less than half, half of the phone calls they receive and so especially after that five minute mark people likely aren't going to pick up um and so which makes it harder to connect especially um especially when it's hours or days after they submitted that request um email is incredible um 85 of the united states are active email users um i think that's fairly obvious we all use email the problem is if we are trying to get to that five minute mark or as quick as possible um i think all of us on this call um we check our emails regularly the stay at home person um, that has kids running around and just wants to have their their landscape taken care of um, they might not be checking their email as regularly as we all do and so to get speed as as quick as like most effective as possible on the speed to lead part might not be the most effective sms is really where we're seeing a lot of our customers turn to, especially in the customer services space. Um, and and I, I say that like that's new, but it's not. I think a lot of a lot of the people on this um, on this call are the same way. People are turning to SMS. Um, Seventy five percent of customers say that they like they would prefer to receive communications from companies through SMS. Um, and then the average response time is around ninety seconds, which is awesome. Um, the one hard part to this is that there's a big compliance aspect to it, um, which we're helping our customers work through. And, and once you can master that, um, it's gold. Um, guaranteed you'll connect with so many other customers. Um, and so the next thing I want to hit on is automation. Um, with again going back to the speed to lead concept there are do you have the right process and technology in place um so a few things to think about uh, in in automation are where are your inefficiencies um that's probably the biggest thing to identify first do you have inefficiencies in speed um do you have ineff inefficiencies in the quality of your leads coming over and can you implement something to um, qualify those? Or do you have inefficiencies in your experience even? Are customers not excited about the way that you communicate with them um, or the experience that, that they've had in general? And so really identifying where the inefficiencies are and then figuring out how to automate those. Um, a few ideas here uh, are, are self-scheduling to where when they come to your website, you don't necessarily have to play the cat and mouse game of chasing down a lead. They have it on their calendar. Um, they can schedule a time that's convenient for them. Um, audit, um, automated email. I think a lot of us do this. Um, once somebody fills out a form, sending out an email immediately, um, giving, letting them pick a time or letting them respond or whatever that might be. Um, again, kind of going back to the SMS thing, automated text messaging. Um, if we can put it, get the automation in the right channel where they will see it immediately, um, that's probably going to be our best bet. And also a lead routing solution. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of people have this in place, but this might be new to others. Um, being able to route, whether it's based on, on the location, whether it's based on the type of lead that comes through and whether it's going to a team on, based on round robin or territory based, whatever it might be, um, that can help us get a lot more efficient. Brendan, I, I want yeah. to mention too, we, we have identified a huge plus with Actify just because we work with a number of 
companies in various verticals. And so we, we, we help generate business for these companies. And, you know, just like he had said, the Harvard study, uh, if, if you reach out very quickly within five minutes, typically that's your highest success rate for scheduling demos or whatever type of, you know, sales scenario you, you're in. What's been great with Actify is being able to automate kind of, I, uh, I'm, I'm sure he hates them being called dead leads, but essentially you have a number of contacts that may not have had any activity for some time. And you may just kind of, uh, you know, uh, unqualify those, they kind of fall to the wayside. When in reality, there could have been a scheduling conflict, someone's out of town for a week, and maybe the systems you have set up um, actually don't allow you to kind of still um, actualize those opportunities. And so Actify has been huge with their automated text messaging that kind of has an, an AI aspect to it to where they revitalize these, you know, dead leads that you may suppose just we're never going to get a hold of. And it's been a great, it's been a great tool for us. And really anyone, any company with a, you know, a number of, of, of marketing initiatives where, you know, leads are coming in, depending on how qualified or not, it's been a great service to kind of keep those um, leads alive, still trying to get them scheduled on a demo. If they miss a demo, you use that tool as well to kind of get them back to a schedule. So a lot of, a lot of really cool opportunities there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that really is how most of our customers are using us. Um, they can automate the, the outreach process, um, taking so much off the shoulders of their sales reps. It's not so much chasing, um, but it's, they really just get to focus on the inbound calls that they take. Um, which kind of leads into our next point, like for, for those that you aren't able to reach within those five minutes, um, we, we were looking at rain sales training the other day and, um, and we all know this by experience as well. We don't necessarily need a report to tell this, but to tell us this, but on average, um, it takes, it takes eight touch points to get a meeting, uh, with somebody who has even showed interest, um, prior to that point and top performers are a little different. Top performers on your team might be able to do it in five touch points, but um, as we as we look through our data, uh, I would venture to guess that a lot of us don't would not would stop before eight touch points, um, and our reps would give up, kind of say it's a waste of time. Um, and I'll leave it to you. I mean, it's 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 something to consider, um, but I'll leave it to you to determine whether the time for that, that rep to take to get those eight touch, point, eight touch points or five touch points is worth the extra deals that come through because of that. But if we can automate some of those touch points while still feeling human, um, that is the perfect combination there. Um, so yeah, just hitting on that again, pro, like the pros automating the touch points you save time, um, your reps can focus on building relationships, um, really preparing for a call. And also it saves on, on rep exhaustion. Um, reps get exhausted. They get tired of, of calling people and leaving the same voicemail day after day. Um, so if we can automate some of this while still feeling personal and human, um, again, that's the perfect balance. And so um, just to go off what Justin was saying earlier, that's, that's really what, where we thrive is that perfect balance of automation and feeling human. We Actify, we create conversations. Um, we're not just an SMS platform. We are a conversational platform. And so we, we create conversations with the end goal of getting the consumer on the phone with sales reps. Um, and so we just, we really want to take that time off of the sales rep shoulders that they spend sending a ton of emails, leaving voicemails and let that be automated. Um, let people ask questions to our AI, let people figure out different scheduling with our AI. And that way your reps can really just focus on, on closing. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's really the the conversion side of things. And um, hopefully that helps, but I, now I wanted to pass it over to Justin and, and he's really gonna talk about the customer review and, and how to 
retain customers, but at the same time, get more customers with that. Yeah, I'm Brendan. Real quick, I'm I'm glad you mentioned. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the conversation platform that you are. There are so many SMS, you know, like text messaging platforms out there. We actually use a few others just for very specific use cases. And Actify kind of stepped in and really filled that specific use case for us, and it's been awesome. But I'm glad you went over a few others because the reality is Actify can is really scaling in a way that they can satisfy multiple use cases rather than just the kind of reviving dead leads, dead leads example. Um, but, you know, I, I think for a number of the people watching, I, I, I can see some real use cases for them. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Brendan. Um, all right. Let me make sure I have uh, control here. Oh, let's see. Let me go back one. So specifically, how can, you know, uh, Brendan talked about how you can increase the pipeline, how you can, you know, have those conversations consistently, how you can create event triggered opportunities there. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about once you've identified that customer, let's say even in a, in a closed deal opportunity, they are now your customer. How can you get the most ROI from them? So we're kind of talking of a complete customer journey, right? You're trying to create the leads and then your sales team works them. And I'll even touch a little bit on that section of the customer journey. But then I'm going to go over really how are you getting the most ROI from each of your customers. So one thing that we do at Best Company is we gather a few things uh, past just the typical five stars and a, and a short paragraph or maybe even a few words, depending on, you know, wherever you might be getting reviews. And that is a net promoter score. So that's typically... Uh, that's a one to 10 score that is the likelihood that you would recommend the service to someone else. Uh, sentiment. So we gather, and it, it, is, it is an option. People can kind of decide in our flow when we ask them to complete a, uh, you know, a feedback review. If they want to also add, you know, what was their score on customer service, value, trustworthiness, quality. And that's been a huge uh, advantage for us as well, because we can identify um, averages within an industry. So if you're a solar company, we can tell you, hey, you know, you, uh, your trustworthiness compared to the rest of your industry is an entire uh, point higher than all of your competitors, if that makes sense. So it creates a lot of what we, you know, a, a lot of marketing assets that we kind of categorize, uh, um, categorize as reputation marketing, where you can really um, put yourself on a pedestal essentially against your competitors showing, hey, we're going above and beyond. We really put a lot of work into our customer service and it shows here based on what our customers are um, the feedback that we're getting. And then video testimonials has been a huge uh, opportunity, both for best companies, for any company looking to really level up their social proof, which that's a word. If you haven't heard that before, it's essentially the, you know, the marketing assets and the user generated content that you build up and you host on your website. You have your sales team using them uh, in person. There's so many different touch points that you can social proof um, and you just need to use the content generated from your users uh, or your customers to do that. And so Video testimonials has been fantastic. Best company, um, we've created a pretty uh, second to none process of, of gathering reviews and then helping uh, those customers get influenced to upgrade the review to a video testimonial. And that's getting expanded into all sorts of new opportunities, just referrals. There, we're, we're doing a lot there. So that's, that's kind of where that discussion starts about having ROI, um, uh, you know, getting the most ROI from, from gathering uh, customer feedback. So I have a couple examples here just to illustrate, um, you know, what, what that looks like, you know, social proofing your business. And so there's a lot of website, there, there's a lot of widgets that, that you can create and some are automated, um, you know, with best company, all the reviews that you gather, you can, you can place into a lot of different widget scenarios on your website, on landing pages, even in emails. And so one that you may have seen uh, some places is, is like a carousel, which is great. You know, what are our customers saying? Uh, you may see on websites that there's even entire pages dedicated to reviews. There's a review section, um, and that's been really great because that can also rank on SEO as a separate page. And I'll, I'll um, I have the next slide here can go even deeper into that. Um, you can also provide a, a review intake uh, on your website. So as customers uh, return, maybe they're looking to get a little bit more information, get a, a you know a, a support phone number or something. You can have a place there that they can actually leave a review. Um, and that way too, if you'd like, you can even create your own um, email campaigns or, or some other channel to get reviews, but you could send them to a page on your website. 
uh, which is which is great. And then you can just also highlight individual reviews on your website and whether that's, you know, obviously you can always do a copy and paste. We found that um, customers, for instance, trust less and less some of the major platforms. Google's uh, trust in Google reviews has declined pretty drastically. Um, you know, someone can kind of have a friends and family event and have everyone just go leave reviews on their company because they're not tied to real customers. And so there actually is a, a noticeable trust and lots of um, reports that show um, trust diminishing there. So you need to look for a trusted uh, resource and platform to be able to um, uh, do that. And then on the on the reputation marketing side, there's a picture there of, of social sharing. And so what this means is you can take that user-generated content and it can actually populate a lot of your social strategy. I mean, you're, you're going kind of direct to the customer, to consumers on these social platforms. You know, unless, I mean, obviously B2B, you're going to your customer, which is, you know, another business. But in the B2C space, in these home services, you're going direct to your, um, to your customer and you're providing, again, that social proof, but on social platforms. So right there, highlighting Rising Sun, they, um, they've really embraced a lot of the products that we uh, uh, provide. And that is within their, um, you know, within the app that we provide, they're able to just click on a review and share it directly to um, social media. And it pops up with that, you know, validated by best company. So again, it's, it's not just a generic review that was a copy and paste situation. It's a real review that was validated and offers some additional um, social proof there. Um, in advertising, if you look at the top there, the number one customer rated home security system, Cove, um, Cove has done a great job kind of building a reputation uh, stack. Uh, they use US News World Report. They use a couple of others where they, they diversify the reviews that go throughout and then they use it in their marketing. Anytime I see it pop up on Facebook, I'm seeing Best Company, US News Report. They're referencing these, uh, these channels where they're gathering reviews. So it isn't just, hey, check us out on Google, which again, Google's dimin it's getting the, the, you know, the trust there is diminishing. So they've gone elsewhere to build up their reputation. And that shows up great on SEO that I'll touch in a minute. And then, you know, on reputation marketing, you have sales. So we have, um, I'll highlight one company, Rock Financial, that actually in every one of the phone calls that they reference is a, um, uh, they say, hey, don't take our word for it. Go check us out on Best Company. And you can do that on any platform that you choose, but you can, essentially the sales team is, you know, over the phone, whether you have inbound or outbound sales teams, you can use it as social proof, even though it's not, you know, content on a piece of paper or anything, you can use your voice and say, hey, go check us out here. Don't take our word for it. Works great. The video testimonials, another great opportunity. If you haven't seen, you know, pop-ups are becoming not the, uh, not the uh, invasive ad pop-ups, but for instance, there's a lot of triggers where you can set, you know, after someone's on your website or on a page for more than six seconds, for instance, a video pop-up will show up with an actual, a real customer talking about their experience. And you can see how influential that can be. Um, we did a study and found that six, uh, people are 67% more likely to make a purchase after watching a video about the product. So you can, you can imagine a 67% increase and, and, you know, you might think, oh, well, that's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars trying to find a contractor and creating videos around all my products and services. No, go to your customers, go to your customers and get simple video reviews that are real. Um, you know, you can tell ones that are doctored up and fake and there's an actor uh, more and more customers appreciate kind of the raw video testimonials. And we, we hold to that at best company for sure. Um, Obviously, email campaign campaigns are really great, pushing people through the sales pipeline. Once a lead or opportunity is generated, lean on the experiences of your past customers to really push them through, not only on you know, the sales rep or whoever's going to be talking to those customers. Um, that's really influential. You know? And then I mentioned dedicated review pages. That's a great place to populate video reviews, um, video customer reviews as well. Now, the customer journey is kind of an interesting one. Uh, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit, but first, you know, as I talk to a lot of companies in a home service, I say, I say, how are you acquiring customers? And they say, well, you know, online, obviously Google, you know, search results, we try to be really um, powerful on search. And so, um, and then the other one obviously is, is referrals. Those are the two main ones. So I want to give you an example here, Sundrop Solar, if you're here, I apologize, um, but they, um, as far as I know, they are not working with us. This is why I, I reference them. But as you can see, if I just had an experience with Sundrop Solar, let's say knock on my door, a little bit of marketing material, I saw them online. I searched Sundrop Solar to learn a little bit more about them. 
And as you can see here, um, they are listed on Yelp, one star. Their Google My Business is at a 3.2. Angie, 1.9. So you're seeing star snippets throughout this search. And typically what people are going to do when they, um, when, when they see a company like this, they're not going to click on these other websites. They're probably just, they're trying to get to the company's website. So they may end up clicking on that company's website. But this is an entire step that we call a no-click search where they are valid. They're, they're getting their questions answered by what they see, even if they end up going straight to the company's website anyways. Does that make sense? You don't have to click on this Angie's List or Yelp page. They're probably going direct to the website, but they're getting an idea of the reputation that's already been built by this company. So let me contrast that with another company, Havasu Solar, who has taken upon themselves to really build up their reputation stack and are present on multiple channels, okay? So when you search here, you can see that they have taken into consideration where they are present and they have built up each one of those platforms. So best company, we, you know, the, the profiles we build for companies have a, uh, uh, you know, a really high word count. They tend to rank really well on, on SEO and we kind of take pride in that. It's a, it's a service that we, we offer to companies that want to list um, to, to really build up that profile so it shows high up on the search results. And as you can see, it's a totally different experience here. If I still end up clicking on the website for Havasu Solar, I just got four different star snippets right there that validated that this is a trustworthy company. And it's huge. It's a massive influence in a customer journey. So on this next page, you know, my, my design team has not touched this yet. So don't, don't at me, but this is uh, so this is just my little doodling, but in a customer journey, you can see where all these different social proof opportunities um, align. So maybe you have a targeted paid ad, like I mentioned, Cove, you're referencing your, um, uh, your reputation on those, whether it's, you know, a star rating or an average score. Um, you can do that in a lot of different um, um, uh, channels that you're going to market in. And then once they click on that channel, where do they go? They go to a landing page where it's probably an intake form for their information. Boom. That is another opportunity where you can bed widgets. You can make sure that your customer's experiences are represented there. As soon as they become a lead, you may call, reach out just as, uh, just as Brendan said, within five minutes, hopefully. But, um, but yeah, that's an opportunity on the phone. I have a, you know, my sales um, person representative there saying, hey, don't take our word for it. On social media, you're referencing the, the awards and the badges that you may earn based on how you're doing on these, uh, on these reputation platforms. You have, um, you know, on a nurture email, we have a number of companies. In fact, I, you know, as I've coached a number of companies um, on the best company platform, I always say, hey, do you have, what do you have in your, um, in your email signature? And they go, oh, wait, well, I mean, we have our company. No, no, reference an entire review reference, uh, you know, a link out to your best company profile. It's huge. It's a big opportunity there. <clears throat> and then obviously at the point of purchase, you have everything that comes after. And that's what we call the review gen and referrals tools, which is you get the reviews and from those customers, you can kind of identify who is a happy customer based on the review that they give you. And then you can utilize those to upgrade that review from to a video testimonial, which pays dividends, always huge um, differentiator when you're trying to move people along the pipeline. And also a referral. Um, you, you, know, you can identify out of all your customers, which ones had a great experience. And then you can use the platform by sharing reviews and um, utilizing uh, you know, that opportunity to uh, uh, really to, to, to push for referrals. And if I go back one page, let's see. I wanted to reference... Uh, um, Right here, Michael Green. So Michael even shared his own review. So this was not Rising Sun Solar sharing their review, but we have a platform that makes it super easy and their influence to go and share their review after they leave it, which just means free impressions, essentially, right? Uh, a huge opportunity to kind of get that brand recognition into new markets, into new uh, networks based on your customers actually sharing those reviews once they complete it. So big opportunity there. So uh, yeah, just as um, Brendan had, had um, mentioned about what Actify does, uh, I went in a little bit about what Best Company does and kind of the opportunity to really level up uh, your reputation marketing, social proof your business. And it all starts essentially by you know building up that platform. So I have, I have here, you can see 
um, Elevation Solar, they have uh, built a free profile. We have an entire content team dedicated to creating um, you know, a profile that really dives deep into your um, company. It's an independent review, so you can trust that when your customers come see it, it's not uh, you know, it's not a pay to play. We haven't, you know, th this is absolutely an independent review of the company. And then, you know, depending on uh, a couple opportunities, we can go out and get video testimonials for you. We have text, email, and something that you won't see on any other review platform is an actual uh, phone, a call center that will reach out to customers and transcribe the reviews for you. And that has a really high um, uh, rate of return just because it's a, it's a channel that if you get someone on the phone, you typically can get some, uh, some insights from them. So this just with our, um, Actify partnership, we are offering to create a profile for any Actify, um, customer and kind of get everything set up for free. And, and we, we love to do that because it's a service that will, will, will certainly pay dividends, just getting more real estate online. Just like I showed you the two solar companies compared to each other. You saw that have solar one had really taken upon themselves to social proof their business. And that, and that makes, that makes a huge difference. So, um, all right, well, that is, uh, uh, that is all that we were going to cover today. Thanks for everyone for joining. We have a couple of questions. Um, and Brendan, I think the, uh, I think the first question, uh, was for you specifically talking about how maybe some of the, um, you know, conversational AI things can help with a, um, you know, a checkout, a scenario or kind of in, in that stage of a sales process. Do you have anything to add there? Yeah, no, I appreciate the, the question and um, apologize. It wasn't in the slides. This was, I guess the slides were more focused on um, companies with a sales team that are, are reaching out and closing the sales over the phone. But I think this makes it brings up a super good point um, that the shopping cart experience is like insanely important. Um, kind of like what we were talking about earlier with people that have already expressed it, the people that have filled out a form um, have already expressed interest. They've raised their hands and they've said, I'm interested in your product. Same people with, or same thing with the people that have already added something to their shopping cart. And so at that point, we need to make sure that they, their experience is absolutely perfect um, to optimize that conversion right there. Um, again, I don't have any, any stats necessarily. I haven't compared with any stats on that, but implementing a solution, some kind of um, chat, if they have, if they have questions on a product or they're, they're basically to that buying point, but they're not quite yet being able to reach out to you. Um, and even better being able to automate that um, so they can get answers to their questions super quickly is going to be, um, would be a game changer in that shopping cart experience, really just making sure that they they have the best experience possible. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your questions. I know that, that's a little bit vague, but that's just what we've seen over here. Yeah. We, we had another question uh, of just, hey, what, what do you think about Google reviews? You know, I, I did mention that there's a little bit of trust loss there, but it, it, it does have a lot to do with, um, you know, search engine uh, optimization and obviously the Google My Business. Um, for really localized companies, obviously there's the Google map stack, which, you know, so we, we never tell people, Hey, um, Google reviews is not worth your time. Go find, you know, best company or something like that, that really fits your industry and go get the reviews and build your reputation there. We, we truly believe that Google reviews, um, needs to be a part of a reputation strategy. Um, uh, it's, you know, that Google owns that space where we're searching on their platform, you know, so there's not really a way to, to, to go around them. And so we always recommend that, you know, you need a strategy to build up enough Google reviews to be relevant um, and to show up and, you know, especially to get that average, you know, you don't need a lot. Uh, if you can get into double digits on Google and, you know, a four and a half star average, that's actually a decent place to be. And then you might go find those places to get the most ROI from those reviews rather than just getting the five stars in a, in a paragraph. Go see how you can turn those reviews into video testimonials and referrals and things like that. So that's always been our recommendation. We actually do run campaigns for Google reviews as well. Um, so that's, that's always a possibility, like working with Best Company, for instance, we can, we can also do some Google reviews. But we've just seen, I mean, as you, can, as you saw, someone taking their review and sharing it on social media is going to be 10 times more valuable than just a Google uh, review that just lives on a Google My Business. So 
that's kind of what we go after. We want to really um, um, create those those opportunities. Um, and just to add to that, <clears throat> like what what Best Company is doing is awesome. Ob obviously, the customer review space and the customer voice um, or testimonials aren't necessarily a new concept that's been around for a while. But what what Justin and Best Company are doing is incredible um, with being able to surface those and making it so easy for somebody to, to share out their own review. And then not only that, but kind of like what Justin was saying earlier, the Google reviews can be somewhat trustworthy. Um, they're great to focus on, but man, if you can get in front of, if you can get your customers speaking about it on video and get that out to your the your other potential customers that has so much more of an impact we're seeing that video has it is like ridiculously more effective than anything else and so just on social on website and so being able to push that out to your prospective customers will be huge and so just i mean that's one thing that best company is doing but their yeah their whole platform is awesome mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, okay, let's see. I think we had one other question here. Okay, specifically around the solar industry. Um, it, okay, so yeah, great question. So the question is, you know, do do I need a certain number of customers, obviously, to make to you know to make to make everything work, whether it's for Actify's you know platform or another one? And the reality is, um, I would say no. We have a number of companies, specifically on Best Company, that may have done you know twelve installs in a year. And the reality is, you know, if you just kind of send an email looking for a Google review, it might be hard to capture you know any. But you know, we have a platform that really makes sure that we, if if anyone's willing in any way to leave a review, we kind of we cover all the bases: phone, text, email. So we we use uh, you know we work with a number of companies from uh, small business all the way up to some of the largest companies in the country. Um, and so I, I, I would say um, social proving your business needs to be a part of the strategy from the get-go. We actually help, we actually help another, a number of companies at, at startup level who are trying to make sure as they scale and as they, as they build, they are properly social proofed and, and wrapped up in all that user-generated content that can really just make sure that the conversions at every level, whether it's a sales pipeline or marketing um, materials, paid marketing, whatever it is that it's converting at a really high rate. So, um, you know, we deal with a number of companies. Um, now I think, uh, you know, depending on your customer base, we, we just, we've run so many studies and the reality is, I think, I think our most recent one said to, to some level. So it's like, you know, some put in that, that they would highly, um, reference reviews before making a purchase, slightly reference them sometimes, but it was up 98% uh, submitted sometimes to always uh, referencing reviews before making a purchase. So it's just become such a staple, um, you know, and so I really, I think, I think kind of the, the presentation a whole is make sure that you are, um, you know, doing everything to really increase your pipeline, uh, get in touch with these potential customers within five minutes, use services that can help you really uh, optimize that entire um, pipeline and then use the user-generated content you're getting from reviews and your customers to, again, increase conversions as you move people through the pipeline and then make sure post-sale you're getting the most ROI possible from, um, from those customers. So, uh, yeah, I think that that pretty much sums up um, our presentation. Brendan, anything else you'd like to cover? No, I um, appreciate all you guys running on. If, uh, if you have any additional questions or, or need any help with anything, um, look us up on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll, we'll be sure to, to get back to you quickly, but no, appreciate you guys. Appreciate the questions. Okay. Yeah. We'll send out some follow-up information after, uh, after this call. I'm excited to um, potentially meet some of you again. Um, we will, we'll make sure um, to get in touch and, and create some uh, profiles for you on best company and really influence your business. So, um, all right. Thanks everyone for attending. We'll see ya. Thank you. I'll see ya.